All right, so this video is all about how to use quotation marks. So that's the big question, right? How do I use these things? Well, they have several uses. The first one is for dialogue, another one is for citation, and then the last one is to emphasize some words. So let's start with dialogue. You use quotation marks to show exactly what someone said. For instance, John said, comma, quote, I will be late, period, quote. That's exactly what John said. It is incorrect to say something like, John said that he will be late, because John didn't say he will be late. John said, I will be late. So you only want to put quotes around exactly what someone said, word for word. Now, when you are dealing with dialogue, um, every time a new person speaks, he or she gets indented on a new line. So, for instance, we have a conversation, um, you know, what are you doing? The rearranging matches. Why? I have no idea. So each time a new person talks, you indent. You hit the tab button. Now when a character speaks both before and after an interjection, the punctuation looks like this. So you have, quote, you never have any idea, comma, quote, Samantha sneered. So this is my tag. It's, it's extra information, comma, quote, and that's why I'm leaving you, period, quote. Notice that the and here has a lowercase a. That's because it's still part of the actual sentence. You never have any idea, and that's why I'm leaving you. And then we have the same thing down here, right? You can't leave me, comma, quote, comma, quote, because if you do, who will organize your things, right? So you have notice that the tab in for a new person speaking, and then this is our margin line. So you want to watch out for that. Now, if you have a lot of text and it's not conversation, that's fine. It can just stay in the same paragraph. So you end up with, you know, Samantha glared at him. Uh, I don't need anyone to organize my things, she snapped. I was just fine in my organizational skills before you came along. I don't need someone to look after me like a child, right? So then what is she doing? Apparently she's scanning the library. Her haughty eyes are taking in other annoying details of his obsessive compulsive disorder. Huh, Sebastian scoffed. You couldn't tell that from where I was standing, dear. And then again, this is more information. He turned away from his latest project, I think he was rearranging matches, to uh, stare at her. As usual, her clothes were in disarray, her pants, untucked shirt, screaming her need for his guidance. So this is like the narrator's voice. And then, quote, this is what he says, come here, Sam, you're a mess. And then she shouts at him, right, you could use a good mess, and she stalks out of the room. So notice that the only time you tab or you indent is when a new person is speaking or if you had a lot of information in between. So you want to remember that commas and periods go inside the quotation marks like this, right? You don't want to put them on the outside. Now, this is different from the US to the UK. If you decide you're going to go over to the United Kingdom and you're going to write and publish, then the bottom one would be correct. Your periods and your, your commas would go outside of your quotation marks. But while you're here in the US, you want to make sure that they are on the inside of the uh, final quotation mark. So that's one thing. If you've ever gotten a copy of like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings that was published over in England, then your, your punctuation is going to be a little bit different. They also like to use single quotes instead of double quotes over there. So it's just something to be aware of. Now, this does get weird when we get into citation because you use quotation marks when you are citing from a source and if it's a direct quote, like according to one source, comma, you know, quote, blah, 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 blah. And then this is MLA format. So notice I've got my you know, my last name of the author and then my page number. My final piece of punctuation goes at the end of the sentence, not inside. I know I said that periods and commas go inside, but when you are citing something, the final sentence punctuation always goes on the outside of the actual citation, which is the Smith 35. Or you could have, you know, Smith, if you have the name, this is again MLA format, if you have the name in the sentence, Smith explains how, quote, blah, 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 and then page number. So again, your, your period's on the, at the end of the sentence, after the citation. Now, you want to make sure when you are using quotes that you integrate them into your own sentence. If you don't, if you just drop a quote in, like, this has been happening for years, quote, quote, it's called an orphan. Why? Because you, you have not shown your quote any love. It's all alone in the world. It hasn't been introduced. You know, it's just dropped in there in the middle of nowhere. No one, no one cares about it. So what you want to do is make sure that you integrate your quote. You want to show your orphan some love. So you have an introductory phrase, like, many sources agree that, or this guy says that, or the statistics show that. So you want this like tag phrase to introduce the quote so that the quote's not just hanging out there by itself. 
So you've got your final period punctuation on the outside here, right? Now, if this weren't an orphan, I want you to take a look at this. We've got an exclamation point because the exclamation point is inside the quotation marks, but that goes with the actual sentence. The, the whole sentence still gets a period. So that's one of those quirky things with quotes and periods and, and sentence punctuation when you're dealing with MLA format. Also in APA format, that happens too. Now here's something that occasionally comes up. If you have a quote within a quote, like according to some scholars, quote, so this whole thing is on Smith uh, page 42, but on Smith 42, he actually has a quote from someone else, right? The greatest book ever written is in, uh, is a quote itself. So the way that you show the distinction is that you single quote it. And it this is like an infinite loop. You have double quotes on the outside and then you have single quotes and if for some reason you have like a quote within it would be double quotes again and then single quotes so it just kind of keeps going in the more you use it. But single quotes are uh, when you're quoting within a quote on you know if that happens. Now, this is a random use for quotation marks, but it's fairly relevant. Occasionally, you might need to do this. Uh, if you want to highlight or emphasize a word, like as a word, then uh, if I wanted to say do not use a comma before because in your sentence, so I want to highlight that I'm talking about because, it's not like before because, uh, then you would use some quotations to uh, illustrate that. So overall, you just want to remember, if you are using quotation marks in your writing, you should be using dialogue, either quoting a source or emphasizing a word. Those are the reasons to use them.